Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, joined my son, Jordan Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. In today's video, we will explain the similarities and differences between plant and animal cells, so, so let's, let's do, do this. this. Our learning target for today is, I can describe and explain the similarities and differences between plant and animal cells. Both plant and animal cells are eukaryotic, so they contain membrane-bound organelles like the nucleus and mitochondria. However, plant cells and animal cells do not look exactly the same or have all the same organelles, since they each have different needs. For example, plant cells contain chloroplasts since they need to perform photosynthesis, but animal cells do not. Plant cells have a more rectangular shape, while animal cells are more circular in shape. Let's take a look at the following diagram to see what plant and animal cells have in common. Both plant and animal cells have a cell membrane that determines what comes in and out of the cell, a nucleus that controls and regulates the activities of the cell and carries the genes that contain hereditary information, a nucleolus whose primary function is to produce and assemble the cell's ribosomes and making ribosomal RNA a smooth endoplasmic reticulum that synthesizes lipids, phospholipids as in the plasma membrane, and steroids. A rough endoplasmic reticulum whose function is to finish production of proteins for the rest of the cell to function. Ribosomes who function as a mini machine for making proteins. Both cells contain a vacuole which are generally used for storage of materials. A mitochondria which is the powerhouse of the cell that generates most of the ATP energy to power cellular processes and both cells contain a Golgi body or Golgi apparatus which is used to package, sort, and ship macromolecules to be used in different parts of the cell. Now let's take a look at some of the differences between plant and animal cells. Number one, both animal and plant cells have mitochondria but only plant cells have chloroplasts. Plants don't get their sugar from eating food so they need to make sugar from sunlight. This process is called photosynthesis which takes place in the chloroplast. Once sugar is made, it is then broken down by the mitochondria to make energy for the cell. Because animals get the sugar from the food they eat, they do not need chloroplasts, just mitochondria. For more info on how plant and animal cells came to be, check out our video on the endosymbiotic theory of cells. Number two, both plant and animal cells have vacuoles, but plant cells contain a much larger, singular vacuole that is used to store water and maintain the shape of the cell by pushing against the cell wall, which helps keep the plant rigid and standing upright. In contrast, animal cells have many smaller vacuoles, which are used for storage of nutrients, water, or waste. Vacuoles in animal cells are not used to provide shape or hold the cell up like in plant cells. Number three. Plant cells have a cell wall as well as a cell membrane. In plants, the cell wall surrounds the cell membrane. This gives the plant cell its unique rectangular shape. Animal cells simply have a cell membrane, but no cell wall. Think about it. If animal cells had cell walls, then animals would not be able to move due to the structure of cell walls. They would be stiff and rigid just like plants. Number four, the products of one process is used as reactants for the other process and vice versa. Basically, photosynthesis and respiration depend on each other. The products of photosynthesis, glucose and oxygen, are used as reactants to power cellular respiration in animal cells. Animal cells take in glucose and oxygen from plants, which goes to their mitochondria. Their mitochondria then convert these two reactants into ATP energy to power cellular processes throughout the body. Carbon dioxide and water are given off as byproducts of cellular respiration, which plants use to help fuel their process of photosynthesis. Plant cells take in the carbon dioxide and water that is produced through cellular respiration and use it to produce glucose. Oxygen is given off as a byproduct of photosynthesis. For more on cellular respiration and photosynthesis, check out the videos above. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with explaining the similarities and differences between plant and animal cells by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% or higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click our bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Peace and have a positive, productive day.
I'll do it myself. 